is Svetlana and Valley Conrad with you, Valley Agnes. Today I'm gonna be, well, continue the uh, stories from Russia when I was in the academy with Eric translating there for him to help him out. Um, so today I'm gonna be talking about uh, Genrich Mayorov. Uh, he is uh, still uh, Dean of the Choreographic Department of the Mgach Bolsha Academy. Um, so <clears throat> when Eric got there and he started, uh, I guess, doing choreography there, uh, there was an interesting moment. So uh, Marina Leonova, she's a rector of the academy, so she gave him students. Um, it was originally, well, they had a three couple uh, in dancing, but they, they were, they, there were more students like that. I think there was like 12 in reality because they were learning just in case if one of them cannot make it so that they will also learn the part. Uh, but it was a, like only six uh, kids that were performing the whole piece after that. So anyway, uh, so they decided that they need something for the uh, graduation, not the graduation, but the, uh, at the end of the year performance that they do. And um, yeah, some of them will graduate in that year. So for them, it will be the graduation, I guess, uh, performance. Um, and uh, so they asked Eric, oh, okay, so maybe you should do some choreography for our students. And he's like, okay, I'll do it. And uh, I remember when uh, we were going out, uh, only teachers, I guess, you would call it that way. And uh, so we went out and uh, Genrich Mayorov was with us. We went to the restaurants, it was sushi. It was, it was interesting for Russians to go to a sushi restaurant. So anyway, but we went to a sushi restaurant and uh, he was, uh, you know, wanted to know, um, to know Eric Moore, so he wanted to ask like what he's all about, his story, what, what's a, you know, like it's normal thing. So, and um, it was interesting that he already kind of a pay, was paying attention to him and he was already looking at him like, well, he has some kind of a choreographic potential. And uh, I remember like, so at some point, uh, because Genrich Mayorov, he actually, did one uh, ballet that was became very um, like famous, I guess, and uh, a lot of people. It became it became a collection of the Soviet um, ballet collection. It was called go, like Golden Air. You know, it's a ballet Cipollina. Uh, so he created that. But I think um, Bolshoi decided that they're not gonna perform that ballet anymore. So they're gonna put that ballet in the shell. Um, anyway, but so I remember when he, he Genrich Merrick, he was explaining that when you know as a choreographer, it's a very hard thing sometimes to squeeze the ideas out of your head. And uh, he said sometimes you'll get a, a choreographic like blank, you can't really decide what you want to do. And you know, it's, and he says, and the answer is not that, that you're actually in that stage and you don't know anything. And you don't know what to create next, you know, like you have some kind of a, you know, pause, you know, you can't, somebody's like blocking you, you know. And he was talking, was like, well, they, he was trying to explain to her that how, uh, you know, choreographers do those kind of a things. And he says, like, well, let's just give you a challenge. You will do it with our kids, uh, our students, and uh, see if you can actually co choreograph something. And he says, like, okay, well, tell me what you want. And he says, like, well, well, we don't really care you know what, you know, you're gonna choreograph. Um, so, surprise us, do something modern, you know. It's like, okay, but he said, like, I'm not a modern choreographer, I'm actually a ballet choreographer, but they said, well, we want to see what you can do, something that is not in your expertise. And um, <clears throat> so the way Eric went about it, he actually said, oh, he asked the kids, so what do you want? You know, what kind of a music you want? Or, and there was a selection of the music for them. And uh, at that time, the movie uh, Matrix came out, you know, so I think that was the first one. Uh, and I remember we saw it in the movies too, in Russia. Uh, they actually have a couple um, movie theaters where they play um, 
movies in the, in the, with the original soundtrack. If it's in English, so it's gonna be in English. Um, so it's special just for foreigners. You know, they play different, you know, from different countries, but mostly it's yet it's uh, uh, American movies. And we went to see that one. <laughs> I remember that, you know, because you know, it, it's funny because Eric said that the reason he doesn't want to go to see movie in Russian because um, it disturbs the whole picture because he knows how the actor is supposed to sound and now because it's uh, if it's in if it's in the russian movie cinema right so it's gonna be uh, another russian actor will be voice over laying over the original actor so you will never hear the english anymore i mean that's how they that's how they start doing it so you will not listen hear the english anymore it's just gonna be the the russian actor who voice over and you know so you know, and for him, he says that the, that's what always disturbs the picture because, well, a he knows that how the actor's supposed to sound, and now they sound differently. You know, uh, or he says like I, he doesn't want to watch it when sometimes they do it like like that in Russia. They just to play the movie, but then one person just translate over the whole thing. So there, you can still hear a little bit underneath uh, English. Then, but mostly it's gonna be Russian translator just doing one 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 voice does for everybody, you know. And he says that's also disturbing because the mouth doesn't ma match the the words, and that's what it, what he said. So I guess maybe that was only, or maybe he just wanted to because it still remind him of his own culture. So he wanted to see the movie in his language, native language. So anyway. Uh, so we went to see the movie Matrix, and so there's a lot of Russian kids, and people kind of like the uh, soundtrack to that. And he says, well, do you want to do some piece to that? You know, let's just do it. And um, the thing is just, you know, on the uh, uh, YouTube, it does not allow that soundtrack to play, so it always blocks the sounds. You know, but you know, maybe if I'll do it in my podcast, it's kind of going to be underneath my voice. Maybe you will still hear it. You know, so that was the original music to that uh, piece. And Eric called it Generation X. And so the kids actually, they did like that. You know, the funny part about it was, you know, some, some year, some, I think a couple of years later, when uh, uh, the same students, you know, actually now they became already the dancers of Bolshoi theater and uh, they came to visit, uh, you know, when Bolshoi went for the tour and they, they go to tour all every year except the pandemic now um, and it was in, and they always go to LA and they premiere in Costa Mesa that, what is the Costa I told them, center, so they perform there um, and uh, that's where it was we they came they came in I don't remember I think it was 2000 10 or 2011 when they came in there um, and so we saw them and the, the same students that they were students but now they're dancers of the Bolshoi theater uh, they actually had the soundtrack of the Matrix on their phones and they were always like when they saw Eric he's like oh I remember this we have this piece you know so it was interesting to see like how actually certain um, you know you know maybe like whatever the dance that was done for fun uh, impact people and they still remember you so anyway but what I'm trying to say about this piece uh, in the generation X you know so Eric had probably few months to prepare because normally uh, well as they explained to us that the choreographers normally would have a, a year to prepare for some kind of a piece you know but they we didn't have a year we only had a few months uh, and uh, because they wanted to see if he's capable of choreographing or whatever you know and I remember one time so um, so when they saw when Gary Khmerov show up first time, he's like, okay, let's show me what kind of a music you're gonna be using. So we played the music, it was from The Matrix. And he says, like, oh, that's a very hard piece of music. I, well, let's see what how, what you can do with that. And um, so I remember like some rehearsals later, the kids always had fun with that. And it was probably the most interesting footage to watch. Uh, you know, I don't have a sound, unfortunately, because I told you before, like when I transferred the sounds from, uh, in, from PAL to NTC, uh, it, and, and it was filmed on VHS. 
at that time so when I made it digital we lost the sound uh, due to conversion process I guess you know so anyway but footage is enough where you can see how much they actually they enjoy you know to do like you can see Eric was very very into it you know he's completely you know like had like bright eyes and he's more into uh, it, like there's an excitement in the rooms that sometimes it's actually very 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 hard hey cat you know it's very hard to sometimes see uh you know but you can see that in the in the footage how much he actually enjoys uh, being a choreographer and the kids like it it's it's a completely different scenario versus when he's teaching because he's a teacher you like more serious you know and you know and you know everybody's like more serious too like no nobody like jokes around or laugh laughs around you know so choreographic process are way more interesting to observe and uh, you can see the dynamic between uh, kids and how they receive information you can see like who's into it who's enjoying who really wants to be you know who just wants to dance and so it's, it's all there you can always see that and i remember like so one of the times in the rehearsals um genrich mayorov show up you will see it's, it's a little bit of a footage he's kind of a, like right against the mirror you can see him i was filming that and uh, you know i remember like in that moment where he said it's like i can't believe you can actually choreograph you know and he said it's like you do really have a talent and i don't think so it kind of came out from him as unexpected i think he didn't want people to really hear it because he's known for being very grumpy and not really complimenting people so much on their choreographic choices and ideas but he actually did say that you know he says that he was surprised that he can he actually has a talent and he says and he even says it's a little bit annoying that you have a talent and that was a compliment i guess well i guess if if you know that's tell you the truth you know that's how russians we give the compliments we will give you a compliment and then we'll insult you in the same time because that only shows that we really, really, really like you. You know, that's, I don't know, it's a cultural difference. That's how we do it. We insult you and then we actually compliment you. you know, so then you know that you probably got the, uh, probably we like you. That's how you know for sure. And um, yeah, that was, was one of my interesting, I think from all of the experiences, I actually do like watch the only, you know, I'd say the most exciting ones and when he choreographs. Too bad that not always, not often he can do it. Um, due to, you know, he needs to train the dancers first so that they will be capable of uh, perform and dance to what extent that he wants. Um, the last person that he choreographed on was Misty Copeland, you know, so... Again, it was a very interesting process to watch too, you know between two of them like you can see like how much they actually were uh, into in the zone of uh, you know he choreographed she listens to him and there's a creative process where she was also interested in his ideas how he sees it and perceives it so yeah i mean if so, even so it was not really like meant to be a serious piece because it was on also just uh, for one of the um, performances the dancer dance against cancer you know so it wasn't again it was done on the spot very quick it wasn't done like nobody like prepared for so many months or whatever it was only like a few weeks the few rehearsals uh, and she performed it in the um, in, in the lincoln center lincoln center as well was yeah no no it wasn't lincoln center was it near oh what is that oh my god the school that near is there Whatever, you guys know which one I'm talking about. It's right near there, next, ne next to the Lincoln Center. So anyway, that's where um, it's interesting to watch, you know. In my opinion, I like Eric as a choreographer more, you know, um, because he has a really interesting way of telling the stories. Well, I know the ballet world needs more proof, but maybe you'll get ready and actually, you know, have a good technique to really for him to actually use you as a dancer. How about that? You know, so consider that too. Same.